uh, with me now is Professor uh, Kinder Andrews, who's Professor of Black Studies at Birmingham City University. And I'm also joined by Norman Lebrecht, who's author and commentator on classical music. Thank you both for joining me. Professor uh, Kindy Andrews, first of all, you heard what the Prime Minister said there. He said, I think it's time we stop this general bout of self-recrimination and wetness. Is it your view this is a, an argument about politics over our past, or is it a mu strictly musical decision? Well, I mean, it's frankly ridiculous that the Prime Minister had to come out and comment on what music plays at the BBC prom. But it does show us actually this is quite an important issue that Britain, and the Prime Minister included, doesn't want to have a proper discussion about its history. I mean, these are two songs, Rule Britannia and Land of Hope and Glory, which are nothing more than, at the time, propaganda for the British Empire, which is deeply steeped in racism, and they are deeply problematic. It, should not be, it shouldn't even be having this conversation in the 21st century as to whether these are appropriate. So they shouldn't the be playing at all, is that what you're saying? I mean, the for that's come around is, is, is mind-boggling. I mean, like, my school stopped playing Royal Britannia 20 years ago because they recognised that that was a song from the past that shouldn't represent modern Britain. And if this is where we are right now with this conversation, I'm deeply worried about any serious change so, um, after Black Lives Matter movement. Let me just clarify. You, you believe that neither Land of Hope and Glory or Royal Britannia should play at the proms ever again? Well, they shouldn't have been playing. I'm, I'm surprised. I'm actually surprised they've been playing for so long. And this idea that we celebrate as a tradition, well, it's a bad tradition. Both of the songs are deeply problematic, uh, inappropriate and racist propaganda. We should be left in the past where they came from. Norman Lebrecht, I was just looking at you there. You don't look happy. <laughs> well, I'm hearing a call to censor our complete history uh, to suit the current mood of liberalism, which seems to me just a little bit extreme. Um, it's Firstly, this whole argument is based on a complete misapprehension. Rule Britannia has got nothing to do about slaves and has nothing to do with empire. The word slaves is in because it rhymes with waves. If you'd written seas, we would probably be singing about garden peas. Um, the aim of Rule Britannia, written in 1740 uh, by Thomas Arne for a show in the West End, was to, uh, to promote national unity. It was a time of Scottish secession and they were coming up for another rebellion in Scotland. And what he was arguing was that Britain's united are stronger than Britain's divided, stronger but, but, than the But hang on, it was so at a time, it, it, it was at a, at a time of but, colonial, it was a time yeah. when Britain was at its colonial height, it was a time where slavery was still in action. It's not a time when Britain was at its colonial height. It's a time when Britain was beginning to build an empire. The main focus of British politics at the time was holding the nation together rather than the empire. And this is what it's focused. It's focused on Scotland. Now, if Nicola Sturgeon would, were to object to it, she would have an absolute right to do so. But there's no agenda here, no colonialism and no slavery in this particular song. The more important issue here is this. It is part of a very long-standing national tradition. It goes back at least 70 years that this song is sung at the last night of the promise. We're at a time of great national fragility with COVID and, and with the winter coming on, it's going to be a bleak winter, great unemployment, probably a second wave of the disease. At this time, what people want is stability. They don't want change and they certainly don't want time-honoured traditions like Royal Britannia to be replaced. And the BBC, in trying to get the best of both worlds, or oh, we'll keep Royal Britannia, but we'll take out the words, has actually succeeded in offending absolutely everyone. Professor Andrews, I'm no lip reader, but I, I don't think you were happy with that. Well, it's frankly ridiculous. And again, this is the problem with how we understand our history. The time of Royal Britannia, Britain was making its name as one of the world's leading slave trading nations. The idea that Britain never will be slaves is not related to slavery. It takes a kind of amnesia, which I could only call a, a, a psychosis. I don't know how would you say that. I mean, Land of Hope and Glory was particularly written to celebrate the pride of Britain. At this point, Britain had an empire which covered a quarter of the world's population. These are songs which are there to promote the empire. And if we should have left, as I said, we should have left them a long time ago. And I'm not sure why there's so much there's so much confusion about it. Well, but pr Professor, <laughs> isn't the irony here, of course, that with, with this and with the tearing down of the statue of Edward Colston, we are more aware of our slave history than perhaps we ever have been? And that's a good thing, but unfortunately, where again, this this is a, I'm, not, I'm really not sure why this is complicated. There's plenty of other songs you could sing. There's plenty of other things we could do. Uh, if if we can't even have if if this is a controversial conversation, then how are we going to talk about the serious issues like what to do about the police, what to do about wealth inequality? what to do about structural structural and institutional racism if we can't even agree that certain songs just belong in the past. It's not about censorship. 
it's about saying we just should have moved on. Norman Brecht, I mean, the conductor, Dalia Stasevska, she says this is a perfect moment to bring change. I mean, she's right, isn't she? Um, I don't think she's right. I think mean, she's entirely wrong. Uh, Dalia Stasevska is a Ukrainian with a Finnish passport who knows very little about this country. Uh, she's a young woman who's conducting her first last night in the proms. Uh, and she comes into it with, with great innocence. And I don't think her views hold very great weight. Um, I am entirely opposed to censoring our history in the ways that have been suggested. Yes, I agree, Land of Hope and Glory does have an imperialist connotation. Wider still and wider uh, is a suggestion that British power should be expanded around the, the globe. We should be aware of that. But to say that it didn't happen, to say that it's not part of our history, of our tradition and of our identity is an act of self-censorship that is tantamount to what Stalin used to do with his encyclopedias. In other words, erase people who were no longer convenient to him. In a free, open and liberal society, we should discuss this matter. I'm delighted that we're discussing them. But uh, if we're going to start editing and censoring, what are we going to do with the national anthem? Send her victorious. Oh, we don't want the Queen to be victorious. We wanted to have an amicable multilateral negotiation over fishing rights. Professor? I mean, I think, so, so I just this idea this is censorship. Nobody is suggesting that you should be censored the song or it shouldn't ever be played. It's saying that on a prime time, public service broadcaster, what the BBC is, perhaps it's inappropriate and has been inappropriate for a very long time. And we should, the whole point of this moment should be to say, well, let's look at some of these symbols. It doesn't erase any of this from our history. These songs are about celebrating the negative parts of the history. So why don't we have songs, and yes, a British national anthem that celebrates the positivity rather than you're stuck in the real negativity of the colonial uh, period? Norman Lebrecht, quickly. These are two songs that are actually rousing. They do celebrate positivity. They unify us. They bring people together. They remind us that the season is about to change. It's the second Saturday in September, second Saturday night in September. We're about to go into autumn. We're going into winter. Let us sing something that will bring joy to our hearts. Both of these, I mean, Arn is not a particularly interesting composer or a very important one, but in this one aria, he did something that brought the nation together. We need it to be brought together now. That's why it's there. Norman Lebrecht, uh, Professor Kinder Andrews, I'm sorry we end on a note of disharmony, but I think it was uh, <laughs> worth discussing once again. Thank you both very much. Absolutely. Thank Pleasure. Thanks.